splits. <coughs> For to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you great, joyous thanks for the resurrection of your Son, which we remember again this day, and we celebrate with great joy in our hearts. Help us always, through all we say and do, to proclaim the great news that He is risen indeed. Heavenly Father, as we gather together as your people, let us hear this word. Let it wash over our very spirits and be strengthened by both this word and the meal which we share and the life which we have had renewed this day through you. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, who is our rock and salvation. Amen. Please be seated. You know, some things are easier said than done, all right? Usually for me, that's home improvement projects. I mean, you know, I mean, just yesterday we're out trying to do some cleanup down at the lake shore. I wanted to blow off the leaves. Easier said than done. I, only, only me, only I can break a blower. Easier said than done. All right? You know, at the end of chapter 27 of Matthew's gospel, right, the, the day of preparation is concluding and the chief priests, uh, are, are, uh, they have something that, are, that concerns them because they know. I mean, Jesus has preached openly. He hasn't held anything in secret. We read that Good Friday. He's told them everything. And they remember Jesus says he's going to suffer, die, and rise again on the third day. So they want to make sure that his disciples, you know, don't come back and, and steal the body and just tell everybody that he rose from the dead. So they're going to roll this giant stone in front. They're going to seal the tomb. They're even going to put guards at its, at its entrance, right? Nothing's going to get past them, right? Easier, easier said than done. Especially when that which they are seeking is contrary to the very will of God. Whose love is being made manifest on this day. It's being revealed, shown to us with great power and joy so that we can gather together now 2,000 years later and pronounce with great joy and exuberance, He is risen! He is risen indeed. Alright, you guys, you guys got it. You guys got it. Good stuff. He is. The stone 
they thought that would hold him in could be moved aside like it was nothing, a little bit of a rock, of course, that uh, Jesus, they thought they could hold him there. They thought they could keep him in the grave. But as we just sung that, that hymn of praise, that, that great song that we sing every Sunday in the liturgy, this is the feast of victory for our God, because worthy is Christ who was slain, the Lamb who was, of God who was slain, whose blood set us free to be God's people. But why? Why is all of this necessary in the first place? That shouldn't surprise any of us. I mean, we just said it a few minutes ago, right? The bondage that we're in, the bondage to sin through which we cannot free ourselves. But see, that's the blessing of this day. It, it began a, a couple of days ago, as we remember Jesus gathering together with his disciples, telling them, reminding them again of all that he had said and all that would happen. And that they didn't have to worry that he would be with them. And he was arrested and, and put on trial and crucified. And died. But that wasn't the last of the story. You see, the, the continuation is complete in this morning. And this great joy that sin and death and the grave and the tomb overcome. Death, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? And we see this victory. We rejoice in this victory that God has over those to Nemesis this day, this first day, right? I mean, God is fulfilling his creation and renewing his creation, right? I mean, it took God seven days, well, six days, and on the seventh he rested. But the day, the day of new creation, the day of his son, is this day, which we come to celebrate and remember. And so it's this day where the Marys, right? The Marys are coming to his tomb. Why? Well, if we go into Luke's gospel, we read that they're going there to prepare his body. But that's not what Matthew reminds us. He says she's, they're just going to the tomb just to look at it. Why? Did they remember what it was that Jesus had said? And then, of course, we know the text tells us Matthew reveals the earth shook. I mean, the death of sin and death itself? Why not? It is earth-shattering, earth-shaking news. The victory that Jesus has accomplished on this day. The angel is there, beams. And that pro pronouncement to the women that were there. He is not here. He is risen just like he said he would. Come and see. He's not here. Then the women are given a mission, a new task. Something they didn't quite think they would encounter. Go and tell. Go and tell this good news, this great hope that we receive. And of course, they encounter Jesus on the way out. Do not be afraid. He says, go to Galilee where the disciples, they will see me. That's a... A key phrase for us today and really for this entire pilgrimage that we share together, this life in Christ. Do not be afraid. Why? Because death does not have the last word. Take a deep breath. Worship should be sensory. Take a deep breath right now. We all know what we're smelling, right? Right? It's a different smell that we have on just about any other service. It's those beautiful Easter lilies. Right? That's a reminder. I mean, isn't that what Easter lilies are? Those are flowers that we commonly see where? At, at funerals, right? Now, I don't have much of a green thumb, but I, I know enough about lilies that you take those bulbs and you bury them deep in the ground, right? 
I, I, wanna, there, you, I think you have to bury them upside down if I'm right or something like that. But the ground, you see, the ground cannot hold it. It cannot encapsulate it. It, it cannot keep it from doing that which God has made it to be beautiful and white and pure. Death could not hold our Savior. And when we are in Him, neither can it hold us as well. All of us in this room at some point have been touched by death's grip. But we still cling to the hope that this day that Jesus' resurrection brings, like Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, chapter 6, we have been united with Christ in our baptisms. Front and center. There it is, the font right there that reminds us how we are united to Him. But isn't it interesting how Paul says, he says we are united with Christ in a death like His so that we too will be united with Him in a resurrection like His as well. The old self crucified with Him. Our new selves looking together in hope. That's what this day brings. Not only new life, but new hope. New hope indeed. So we share a common mission with the Marys. We're going to leave this place. We're going to share some fellowship, enjoy each other's company. But we've also come to share in a meal as well. To share in a meal that reminds us that we are forgiven in Christ. And that in that forgiveness comes salvation through him. This is a, a foretaste, you see, of the great feast that we will share together when our Lord comes again to claim us all that have found our unity in him. So as we come together, we do meet and we eat. We share the good news and the great joy and the wonderful hope that this day brings. And you know what? Every Sunday is a little Easter. We come back again and again to hear the great joy of the good news of Jesus Christ in word and sacrament. We are strengthened for this life together so that we can go out into the world. It's, it's, it's a hard place sometimes. We need the renewal and strength and hope that we receive here in Christ. And so we are re-strengthened every Sunday, not just this Sunday, but every Sunday we gather together as His people in His name, united by great joy and hope in Jesus Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Let us take a moment to...